Right now on your news at noon, a data breach hits close to home. How student information was shared at the School of Mines and Technology. And the temperatures are rising fast. Just how hot will it be this weekend? I'll tell you. If you love Instagram but hate being limited to square images, you're in for a treat. The photo sharing tool is now providing more layouts for your photos and video. More stories and more on Coda Territory News at noon. Good Friday afternoon. I'm Scott Gross. Welcome. I'm Helene Duhamel. There's been a data breach at the School of Mines, and it came from inside the school. Officials say it was an accident, according to an email sent to students by Public Relations Officer Danny Mason. A university employee inadvertently sent an email to graduate students with an attachment containing names, student ID numbers, and grade point averages of other graduate students. It is believed about 350 students are directly affected. The university said it is taking this very seriously and will take additional steps to ensure it does not happen again. Mines officials are asking students who receive this inadvertent email, delete it and yeah. confirm you've deleted it. Yeah. Accidents happen, but this is a scary one. Yeah, get rid of it. Coming up, we tell you about a dedication ceremony taking place this weekend. And we'll tell you if the weather will be good for that. Let's check in first with meteorologist Eric Gardner and our forecast first, Eric. And it is really, really smoky outside today. That smoke coming in from those northwestern wildfires, but we do have sunny skies. It is warming up, though, 86 degrees. We're going to be getting just a couple of degrees warmer, but visibility is significantly reduced due to that extensive smoke in the air. Hopefully that smoke will be uh, a a bit as we head into the weekend with a different wind pattern aloft, but uh, certainly smoky this afternoon and this evening. My forecast will call for 88 degrees today, sunny and hazy. Light winds today will be in the 70s this evening. Tomorrow morning's lows mostly in the 60s. In fact, here in town, probably only getting down to 64 degrees. If you like hot weather, you'll love the forecast for the last weekend of August, and that's coming up in a few minutes, Scott. Thank you, Eric. We are continuing to update you about reports of police responding to a scene in the area of East North Street and Milwaukee Street near East Adams. Now, here's a look at the scene this morning where police responded to a call about a fight involving weapons. When police arrived, they did not find evidence of an attack. There was no evidence of shots fired and no arrests made. However, for people living in the area along East North Street near Adams and Milwaukee, it was a scary scene. Again, there is no public threat, and police would not confirm the information from the initial call. Well, after a successful use of license plate readers in Virginia helping capture Vester Lee Flanagan, we check to see if they are in use in Pennington County. The Sheriff's Department has license plate readers attached to the top of two patrol cars. Cameras have been out of use for nearly a year due to a need of an update in technology. License plate readers can scan license plates of passing vehicles, and if a plate is in the NCIC, a crime system, multiple boxes will appear on the computer showing plate number, type of vehicle, and reasons of interest. In 10 years of use, there have only been five incidents, and that outcome has the department weighing their options. Do we spend that money on new technology that we only get a small bang for the buck, or do we use that money uh, and use it in, in other ways that will provide uh, whether it be better training, better law enforcement services to our community. How do we best serve the community here and our taxpayers? So we, we, we weigh all those things. License plates that do not come up in the system are deleted every few days and unlike the Sheriff's Office, the Rapid City Police Department does not have any readers. Unofficial results from the recent Rosebud Sioux Tribal Council election show that William Kindle is elected president. Scott O'Herman is vice president. The tribe posted the ballot on their Facebook page, but there's no indication when the council will canvass the votes or when the results will be declared final. People in Sioux Falls are cleaning up after heavy rains and flash flooding hit the city overnight. Sioux Falls Regional Airport says at least two and a half inches of rain fell in the city. Some throughout the neighborhoods reported more, and a no travel recommendation was issued last night due to flooding that made many Sioux Falls roads impossible to pass. Dozens of drivers were left stranded. Sioux Falls mayor called it a hundred year rain. As many as 5,000 people lost power during the bad weather. If you have driven down Deadwood Avenue in Rapid City over the last few days, you may have said something's different. That is because after more than 50 years, the Ben French power plant was pulled down. Black Hills Power decommissioned this coal-powered facility in 2012 to make way for a more efficient system. The effort to remove the plant started in July, and now the Rapid City skyline is a little bit emptier. New winter fun is on the horizon in the Bighorn Mountains. The Antelope Butte, the Antelope Butte Ski Area will reopen 
next winter after a 12-year hiatus. Andrew Gast is the first permanent executive director of the Antelope Butte Foundation. Gast is raising money to purchase a ski area and make over the facility. Uh, I really think our project is important. I have a, a two-year-old boy and a three-year-old boy. We moved to Wyoming with, with the hopes of uh, recreating and spending time in the Bighorn Mountains. And uh, I think that when Antelope Buttes open, my boys will have a place in their backyard to learn to ski and snowboard and a place that they can uh, enjoy the outdoors. Looks beautiful. The foundation projects an opening date of winter 2016. The facility will be an outdoor education and training center for guests of all ages. Sky Ranch for Boys, Father Don Murray. For many in Coda Territory, these names are forever linked to care for troubled teens. The nonprofit Sky Ranch Foundation operated the center from 1960 through 2011 near Camp Crook in Harding County. To honor this legacy, a new memorial will be dedicated at the ranch at 2.30 Saturday afternoon. The ceremony is open to the public and will be followed by a luncheon. Coming up, either two wheels or four legs, we tell you about two very different events taking place this weekend. Coda Territory has the fever, that is fantasy football fever. We have that story when we return. No matter where you are, we're there on Twitter, Facebook, and at CodaTV.com. Plus, download our mobile apps, Coda Territory News, coverage you can count on. Oh, this is a fun one. About 200 people are retracing Black Hills Gold Rush era history. They rolled back in time to the late 1880s this morning, heading out on a wagon train excursion from the former Ardmore Hamlet in Fall River County on the Nebraska border. They are following that old Sydney to Deadwood Trail, winding through Southern Hills Ranch Country, resting at Pringle, Custer, and Four Corners before arriving in Deadwood. It'll take nine full days, and the history buffs are paying $160 each and providing the animals and authentic wagons in pursuing their Western heritage. The Days of 76 Museum in Deadwood is coordinating this wagon train reenactment. The eyes of the world are turning Dakota territory because of a more modern form of transportation. Rapid City is hosting the fifth Strider Bike World Championship. This is the second time that Rapid City has hosted the Strider Bike World Championship. More than 200 contestants will compete, some from as far away as Japan. Contestants range from two years old to seniors and people in physical rehabilitation. Yeah, it's all right here. This is really a great venue for us. So we'll come in a little bit later in the day here, uh, kind of transform this place to a, kind of a enduro uh, course setup. And you can still register in person for the Strider World Championship at Main Street Square from 3 until 7 this afternoon for $35. And if you'd like a full list of events, they can be found on our website, CODATV.com. Let's talk now about a different sport, football. Americans spend more than $15 billion on fantasy football. That was back in 2013. But how much time was spent? Ariel Orsudo drafted up a group to find out the productivity level during fantasy football season. Receiver and rushing? No, oh, receiver and quarterback. Fantasy football attracted more than 33 million users last year. Some pigskin fans in Coda territory also caught fantasy fever. I think especially uh, here in Rapid City, since we don't have a team that we can go watch, it's a way that you can get a little more involved with the NFL, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It keeps you connected with, uh, with the different players and with the different teams that you're watching in a part of your league. But fantasy football is not a once-a-week duty. It's more like a 9-to-5 job, and it can often be distracting. You know, I will say that throughout the day, uh, when the season starts, I will have to check my, my team, especially uh, if, if when I'm setting the, uh, the team for the next week. But uh, I try to stay focused at work. Twyla Anderson is the manager at Buffalo Wild Wings. She is not concerned by the occasional score check. It's probably okay, as long as they do it in moderation. Server Caleb Angel is the perfect example of that. Uh, I usually uh, half serve and I half watch. I like watching my football. Angel and Anderson say a love for sports makes for a better workplace. Sports in general, it always helps. It's good competition. Yeah, friendly competition. It's just part of the job. It's what we do here. At the Buffalo Wild Wings Fantasy Draft Party, Ariel Orsudo, Coda Territory News. Uh, sorry, just checking my own team right here. Buffalo Wild Wing hosts 50 to 60 draft parties annually. 
and they've already hosted 40 this year. Eileen? If you're not as much into football, what about picking up a book? You can see I'm reading this month's Coda Reed selection is called Worthy. It is a memoir by Spearfish author Denise Turner. Mitzi's Bookstore is offering a discount on this book, but you have to ask for it. And we'll be talking about the book on social media. Use the hashtag Coda Reads. Man spreading is so popular, apparently it's now a word. So is hangry and awesome sauce. These are just a few of the dozens of new words, phrases, and acronyms added Thursday to the Oxford Dictionary online version. According to Oxford University Press, these words represent newer terms judged most significant and likely to stand the test of time. The additions include cat cafe, onboarding, Grexic and Brexit. I don't know if I'm saying these right. I haven't heard of these words. There's also several new terms with Y endings, including cheffy, melty, cidery, and cupcakery. Other words, rando, McKay, beer o'clock, and wine o'clock. I must be old-fashioned. I uh, haven't well, heard of almost any I'm, of that. I'm same as you. I haven't heard many of these at all. <laughs> New to me. Well, we'll start yeah, using them. It's Greek to me. <laughs> well, the recent weather has been a very up and down. Some good book reading weather. It has. It's like Mother Nature can't decide if it's summer or fall. Eric, has she made up her mind? <laughs> I'm just really worried if it's wine o'clock yet. But anyway, it's going to be kind of a hot weekend, so you may want to stay inside of the air conditioning. Uh, as you read some of those books. Let's take a look outside right now. Unfortunately, very smoky today. And this is our Golden West weather camera on Main Street, Deadwood. 83 degrees right now. You'll be a little bit warmer over the weekend, maybe even 90 in Deadwood. The weekend forecast is next. Now, the first alert forecast. Weather coverage you can count on from meteorologist Eric Gardner. And here are some temperatures around the hills. It is warming up quite a bit more than it did yesterday, but we have all that smoke in the air, unfortunately. 86 now in downtown Rapid City. Sturgis at 81, 81 in Spearfish. Deadwood, 83, as we showed you earlier. 78 in Moorcroft at the present time. In Upton and Weston County, 80 degrees right now. So what can we expect weather-wise? Well, of course, smoky today, but we are starting a warmer and drier weather pattern today, and it's going to be hot through the weekend with 90s widespread both Saturday and Sunday. And it looks like next week is going to be fairly warm and dry. This is the official forecast for next week in the central and eastern part of the United States. We'll probably see above normal temperatures all next week, but a change out west below normal as a big trough off the west coast moves inland. That's great news for firefighters in the west, but uh, around here it's just going to mean some hot weather. It looks like above normal precipitation, also great news here in Washington and Oregon, and some little systems could come across the northern plains. Most Dakota territory equal chances of above or below normal precipitation. I think the trend is going to be toward a dry week, however, for most of us. 82 degrees already at the Rapid City Airport and in Denver, but a lot of smoke out there. 75 degrees in Kansas City, where it rained earlier, and already hot in Dallas, where it's 91 degrees at the present time. Storm systems that caused that flooding rain in Sioux Falls and our rain about 36 hours ago is now dumping a lot of rain here in Iowa at the present time. But look at this, some green on the map here in the northwest. It's raining in parts of Washington and Oregon. Light rain, but hey, they'll take anything. This is a very strong upper level low off the west coast. It's pretty much going to be sitting there over the next uh, several days. We have sunny skies, but smoky skies over Coder territory. No rain around here. Lows this morning were generally in the 50s, but temperatures warming up nicely. 82 at the airport, 80 in Pine Ridge. Phillips still at 74, at 75 in Pier, and 75 degrees right now in Hiram. High pressure aloft will continue to strengthen. That means warmer and warmer temperatures. In fact, it's going to be hot as we head through the weekend. By Sunday night and Monday, a very weak front may ease into the area, and that might trigger an isolated thunderstorm, but before that front gets here, boy, it is going to be fairly toasty with lots of 90s, maybe just slightly less hot as we head into the first part of next week when that frontal boundary moves through. Here's the way it looks in your local forecast. Great news for the Pacific Northwest, a pattern change there, but now we're getting a lot of their smoke over here today, probably less smoke over the weekend. What time is it? Wine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Beer o'clock. In technology news this afternoon, if for some reason you thought Facebook's massive popularity was waning, think again. The social media giant saw one billion users in a single day this week. It happened on Monday, and founder Mark Zuckerberg announced the unprecedented benchmark yesterday. He also noted that a billion users is equal to about one in seven people on Earth 
writing, quote, it's just the beginning of connecting the whole world. The company reported in July that it had roughly 1.5 billion people logging on at least once a month. In other social media news, Instagram no longer just for squares. After years of being limited to square-shaped photos and videos, users can now post in portrait and landscape as well. The Facebook-owned photo-sharing tool made the announcement today. It means no longer having to crop out certain parts of a photo to fit the square format. Ad dollars may have played a part in this decision, as evidenced by the first big post after the change, the Star Wars Instagram account posted a widescreen video yesterday morning, and it already has made more than 100,000 likes. Wow. Wow. Well, up next, it's a free concert that wants to go to the dogs. Diane Carey from the Humane Society tells us all about the upcoming Wolfstock. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> Wolfstock. Later, police see a lot of things, but how many officers are pulled over for a car full of kids with no adults? We have details coming up. If your group has an interesting topic for our new interview, call us or email us at least two months in advance. We are joined by Diane Carey, Director of Community Relations and Volunteer Services at the Humane Society of the Black Hills. And we're also joined by a very special guest, someone who's very happy to be here today. <laughs> yes, she is. Her name is Cece. She's a 15-year-old terrier. And so uh, her adoption fee is only $25, you know, being 15, she won't be allowed too, too much longer, but she's looking for um, her forever home and a place that she can snuggle. A very happy dog. <laughs> yes. You can see the smile on her face when she's walking around the studio, and she also has a very unique quality. She has two different colored eyes. Yeah, she has a blue and a brown <laughs> eye, so a little bit different. Now let's talk about a first annual event that's coming up. It's called Wolfstock, and yep. all canines are invited. And okay, I guess you can bring the felines out there too. But <laughs> talk to me and, and tell me a little bit about, and the viewers out there as well, sure. what Wolfstock is all about. It's a music festival celebrating all things canine and feline. And so we're going to have an open mic session that will show up and coming talent here in Rapid City. And then we have three bands performing um, in the afternoon and into the evening. There'll be food vendors, dog games, and it is a fundraiser for the Humane Society. So we will be looking for donations and we've had some great sponsors. And so um, you can come and enjoy the day. You can bring your furry friend as long as they're on a leash and they're well behaved. Now it's not be animal bands, right? No. no. Okay. <laughs> All right. No. Now tell me, Diane, how this idea started. How did you come up with the idea of Wolfstock? Well, you know, I started a year ago and we needed to have a signature event. And one of the staff members um, had worked at another shelter where this had taken place. So uh, we thought, why not try it here? There's really nothing like that here. It's new. Uh, so, and we thought, why not throw a party and invite uh, the community and have a good time? Now, people will have a couple weeks to plan for this. It comes up on September 12th. Yes. Is that correct? And it's going to be at Memorial Park at the Band Shell from 1 to 9 o'clock. Is there anything else people should know uh, before attending? Nope. Just come. Plan to have a good time and stick around. We'll have food vendors, a photo booth, dog games for your dogs. Um, it's just going to be a really good day. And before we go, some real quick tips. A lot of people are at work. A lot of people are at school. Dogs and pets are left at home. Any yep. tip? That, can they be left inside or should they be outside with water? What, what's a good tip? Sure. Um, ideally, inside is the best. Um, it's usually cooler in there. But if they are outside, just make sure that they have fresh water and some shade. Very so. good. That's Diane Carey. This is Cece. She needs a home. You can pick her up at the Black Hills Humane Society. We'll be right back. We have some great video to show you of some kids hitting the road, a woman getting an unusual offer from Donald Trump, and a strolling bear causing panic. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. There's no such thing as a routine traffic stop. Just ask this Minnesota state trooper who pulled over an eight-year-old taking his foster siblings for a drive. Dashcam video shows the car pulling into a driveway, then backing up into the trooper's cruiser. You then see three kids, still wearing pajamas, mind you, pile out of the car. No word on where they were going. I don't wear a toupee. It's my hair. That's Donald Trump's position, and he's proving it. During a campaign stop in South Carolina Thursday, he invited a woman up to touch his magnificent mane. All this came after a line in the New York Times suggesting the presidential candidate sports a toupee. The tension mounts. So is it real? Yes, I believe it is. Thank you. 
And a bear on a walk caused quite a stir in Colorado Thursday. It got a little too close to some schools, so they went on lockdown. Police tracked down the bear with wildlife officials. They used a tranquilizer dart to subdue and remove the bear. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. I just got to say, on the magnificent main, you have to pull. You, you can't just <laughs> touch and know if it's hair. That's what my kids do with Santa Claus. They yank on the beard to make sure he's the real one. You know, if it snaps back. <laughs> a lot of bears. Uh, a lot yes. of encounters with bears as we move into those areas. We mm -hmm. have more of those. So uh, get another story on that today. Yeah, it was a bear country today. Talking tourism, <laughs> but there are a lot of bears. <laughs> hey, we have a lot of smoke in the air today, unfortunately. Even though it's technically a sunny day, we have a visibility reduced due to the smoke from those Pacific Northwest fires. Hot weather expected this weekend. It will be 88 today, 90s likely as we head into Saturday and Sunday. Not a record, but a reminder, it's still officially it is summer in Coda And aren't you glad? we got to enjoy Hot. summer as long as we can. It's going. <laughs> we thank you for joining us. 530 Newscast next.